Welcome you all to our online global self-awakening retreat. This is our day four. I hope wherever you are, you're well and your family's well. It's very nice to be together here again. I'm excited again for another um, beautiful coming event. We'll see what transpires out of today and where the Grand Spirit, Her Majesty, is going to take us. What is it going to be revealed today? What kind of realization is going to take place? What do we get out of this? What's in the store for us? So that part is exciting. And nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And that's the mystery of life. The unknown reveals itself. So all we can do is to be available and to be here. That's very exciting to be available, to be here, and to see what's going to come, what's going to happen. But most importantly, besides what is going to happen, is what is happening right now. What is happening in this moment? What does this moment have? And to really be present with it, to dive in it, be here now. And here and now may not be pleasant. It may be boring. It may be painful. It may be uncomfortable. That too is included in being here. But none of it is going to last it's always changing from one thing to another, constantly changing. So no matter how uncomfortable it may be in, in a given moment, that can always change and it will change to something else. Because it's always fresh, it's always new. So, we're going to talk about self-acceptance, accepting self-love. And we talked about yesterday about love and how throughout this process that as we're growing up, the conditioning and the brainwash by the system, by the society, by life, how it happens. And I'm not here to blame anybody for what is going on because it's not one person or one culture. It's a universal. The goal of what we're doing is to discover the truth of who we are. And sometimes in order to find out who we are, maybe we can't go directly to that. Maybe it's too much. Maybe it's too complicated. Maybe it's difficult to comprehend the truth of who I am. But sometimes maybe it's easier to discover who I am not. So what we're doing here is systematically separating ourselves 
from what is the truth and what is the illusion, what is real and what is not. And this journey that we're going through it, the truth is not necessarily pretty and it could be painful, but it is the truth. And it's only the truth that can liberate you. That's the only thing that leads you to liberation. And the spiritual warrior must buckle up his, her belt and just be like a Zen master, like a ninja Jedi and really like focused on one point and that's it nothing else being focused on one point it's like a laser vision that I want freedom I only want freedom and nothing else and it is a commitment to freedom because freedom it has a price. It just doesn't come easily like that. You must remember you've been in bondage for thousands of years, generation after generation. This is an old, old conditioning. It's an old way of belief. Very few people freed themselves through their commitment to freedom and love and found their way home. The rest, they are in this cycle. They just keep coming and going. So a part of this commitment to freedom is your willingness to let go of your story you got to let go of your story. You have to become storyless. It doesn't matter whatever has happened in your past. You want to use the trauma, the betrayal, the abandonment, the pain, all of it as a fuel to your fire for awakening. Because you paid the price by being traumatized, abandoned, beaten up, raped, shipped from one home to another home, losing your closest friend, losing your child, losing your family, losing your lover. All these things have happened to you is to wake you up. And now we're here. It's a pity to pay such a price for so many years and maybe lifetimes and not to be here and in the last minute on the last run we drop the ball and we lose our courage and dedication and concentration on not completing the task. Coming all the way here and giving into some comfort or some fear or some other ideas. This path, you have to become idealless. You have to become empty. You can't know anything. You have to come to this place that you don't know anything. You got to get empty. Excuse me. <coughs> You have to get empty. You can't know. You have to just come to this place that I don't know anything. And a part of that process is your past. That has to go. And I know for some of you it's very dear. You're really hanging on to it. And you always refer to it, always go back to it. 
And in a way, it's an addiction. I've been around spiritual seekers majority of my life. And I can see the attachment that we have to our past, to our story. And we keep repeating it this way, that way. This happened, that happened. We keep repeating this story in different ways. And we want other people or we want our friend or teacher or whomever to sympathize to hear our story of me being a victim. Poor me. This happened to me. I've been traumatized. It's, there's been injustice. Of course there has been. You entered into a dimension of sleepy people. It's an unconscious planet majority of its population is completely asleep. We're the few who are waking up. Of course you've been treated wrongly because you landed into a family that was unconscious. You landed with these people. Then you're wondering, who are they? How come they're my parents? A lot of you don't have any connection with them. Don't feel any connection. If you were to choose your parents, you would never chosen the ones that you grew up with, knowing what you know now. You would want to choose aware, awake parents who have awareness, sensitivity. They're not dogmatic. They're not robots, but that's not what happened. You landed into a family which is full of ideas, concepts, dogmatic, whether they're religious or they got their prejudice about this or that. So of course, and they have no idea what the hell they're doing as most people around the world have no idea what they're doing and following a program and a system which doesn't work and keep damaging each other. So, you ended up getting hurt and now you're carrying the story. But I'm telling you that this same story brought you to this point, which is fine. But from here on, you have to let it go. You've got to drop this story. You cannot continue with this any longer. And I shared with you before, I'm not your friend. Don't ever consider me as your friend. I'm not your friend. There is no friendship here between us. I'm being very straightforward and very honest with you. And I know you have love for me and I have love for you. But because of the love I have for you, I can't be your friend. I can't be your lover. I cannot and will not ever support your story. I only have one job here in this transaction. This is a transaction. It's like a business transaction. That's it. We give each other something and then we're done with one another. My job is to destroy your ego. My job is to cut your head off. That's not what a friend do. A friend will listen to your story. A friend will 
sympathize with you. He will cry, he will cry with you. You will have ice creams together. You will watch a movie together. They will hug you. They will tell you, I'm so sorry for what you went through. Poor you. What can I do for you? That's what a friend does. I'm not your friend. I have a sharp sword here and I'm ready to cut your head off to destroy you and your story. So you still have time to run away. Because your story to me is just another story. It's only to build up your ego. It's only to keep you at this place that you're a victim. It's only to support an illusion. Supporting something never existed. I understand these things happen to you. I get it. Things happen to me too. But none of them are here anymore. All the heartbreak I went through, all the torture I went through, all the stuff that's happened, they're not here today. It's non-existing. It only exists in my memory. They're just thoughts. And these thoughts, quite often, these memories get altered. They get forgotten. Miss Amy, did you send us a message? Yes. I said your mu the music is still playing in the background. Oh, the music is still playing in the background. Thank you for telling me. Appreciate it. Of course. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. When you find something's going on, you let us know. So. This story that you're carrying, it's a garbage bag. And this garbage bag gets heavier and heavier as you get older, as you continue walking on this path. The garbage bag, it gets heavier. And if you noticed, older people, old people, their spine starts to bend. And as you're getting older, you're getting more bent because your garbage bag is getting heavier and you're carrying the garbage. So what happens every once in a while, you stop, you open the garbage bag. You go into this garbage bag and maybe there's a piece of salmon from three weeks ago. You're digging into the garbage bag and you find a piece of salmon that is rotten and there's maggots all over it and it stinks and you eat it. And you eat it and an hour after you get very sick and you vomit and you feel like shit. And then you do that again. And then you do that again. Then you go to a doctor wanting him to help you. You're seeking help from medical professionals and they try to help you, but they don't know that every once in a while you stop, you open your garbage bag and they dig, you dig into your, the garbage and you eat rotten food and you get sick. 
So, my dears, if you don't want to feel like shit, stop eating shit. Don't eat rotten food. Eat fresh. Eat live food. Go buy yourself some fresh vegetables, fresh salad, fresh meat. Don't eat rotten food. You feel horrible because you keep going back to this past and you keep reliving it and you're very attached to it and you're trying to fix things of your past in the present time. So what do you do? You go to your therapist and they lead you back whether it's a past life regression, whether it's going back into your childhood, whether you're going to fix something with your inner child, or you're going to fix something with a trauma that happened, whatever is the story, is that you're going back in the realms of thoughts. It's the world of thoughts you go back to. You don't remember everything. That's another thing. Is do you remember what happened when you were 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, 13 years old? Do you remember your, your life? What part of your life do you really remember? How much of it do you remember? I quite often use this example. Let's say there's four of you get together, four girlfriends get together, and you know, this is 10 years after, 10 year anniversary after you graduated from college, and uh, you all get together, and uh, you're having a drink, having fun, talking about old days, and uh, one says, oh, remember that one time we were in this bar or whatever and, and you jumped on the table and you had the bottle of whiskey in your hand or tequila and you were drinking and you were dancing and your, your girlfriend says, no, it wasn't me, that was Janet. And Janet says, no, it wasn't me, that was Susan. Susan was doing it. So something happened and none of the four people can agree on that event that who did that so you can't even remember and agree on the same experience you had together because the memory is lost and it's not clear anymore so if you examine it for yourself which i highly recommend it is see how much of your past you really remember how much of it is there how much of it is exactly how it happened because our memory is tricking us you don't really remember it but then you are investing heavily on this story of my life, heavily investing in it. Of this, of that, this happened, that happened, poor me, I'm a victim. And then this, as you get older, you have more relationships, you have more failures, life, the school, you know, you succeed and you fail. And all these things starts to accumulate. But normally we don't do any therapy if we have succeeded and we have won and we had a pleasant experience. You don't go to a therapist or you don't come to me for help. You go to your people for help only when something's bad happens, 
something has broken you, something has damaged, something has really had an impact on your emotions, your psyche. Then you seek help from the professionals. And this accumulates as you go forward, means it adds on to your story. Your story gets more grim, more gray. And your attachment to the story gets stronger. Your investment to the story gets heavier. You're invested in it, deeply attached to the story. And you want someone to listen to it. And you want them to acknowledge it. But that doesn't happen with me. I'm sorry. I have no patience for your story because it's another story. I don't even have any patience for my own story because it's another story. Because I discovered that everything that happened in this life, it never happened to me. It happened to a character named Zarathustra. But it didn't happen to me, because I'm not that guy. I am watching that guy. Nothing has ever happened to me. I was never prison. I was never tortured. I never had a near-life ex death experience. I've never been cheated or lied or heartbroken. None of these things ever happened. It happened to a character playing the movie called Life, and now I can see it, observe it from the outside. It is a great story. It's interesting. I may one day write a book about it, but it wasn't me. And when you come to this understanding, you will actually come and thank me for it sincerely, because you get liberated from the story. Because the story is rotten, and all it does, it makes you suffer. And all it does, it keeps you in bondage. It wraps up your wings. You can't fly. And anybody who wants to work with you on that, and supporting it in any way is doing you a disservice. It's only going to keep you here. And this place, this dimension. Unless you feel a great sense of urgency that something has shifted, something has opened up, which is very clear right now with what has happened with COVID-19 and the economical disaster which is happening. It's very clear that the gate to, gates to the heaven has opened up. And if you can drop your story and willing to sacrifice everything which is a very scary thing to do because a lot of us are very attached to our home, to our money, to our sense of false security, to our way of living, to our family, to our friends, to our pets. You're going to have to sacrifice everything that's needed in order to become free and be able to walk through the gates of heaven, which is happening right now in this moment. So those of you who really feel the sense of urgency that this is the time and have the guts to let go of everything, and put everything at in service 
of this transition, then you will succeed. But if you want to hang on to your things, especially your story, your false sense of security, which is simply imaginary, it doesn't exist, your false sense of identity, that you think this is the person, then you have no chance. You're just wasting your time. Now you're going to probably get another chance to come back and repeat, repeat the same thing. But that's not going to be this time. I assure you, you can't walk through this gateway if you don't have and feel that sense of urgency inside you and the willingness to sacrifice everything for awareness, you have no chance. You just bounce from one teacher to another teacher, one set of teachings to another set of teachings because it's comfortable because it's trendy, because it's new, because it's cool, but you're avoiding the jump. You're avoiding what needs to be done. And that's why so many have tried to reach the peaks of consciousness and very few have succeeded. Very few have liberated, and the rest stay where they are. In Maya, the world of illusion, so I explain this part, one of the reasons I was talking about it is because I want to share with you this struggle that we go through in our lifetime, the lack of self-love and we don't accept yourself that so many of us are struggling with it on a daily basis. I struggled with it. I like to, oh, as much as I can, if possible, to use myself and my own stories as an example of my, my deep struggles that for maybe from the time I left Lucknow to it was like 13, 15, 16, 17 years of going through this thing of why am I like this? I couldn't understand. I was being pulled from the world below and the world above. A part of me was wanted to go back to India and go to Master Punjaji and I was thinking I go there I take my passport and whatever I have and I rip off my passport. I put a lungi around me and I go from one ashram to the other ashram or I just surrender to my teacher and give myself to the teacher and say, do whatever you're pleased to do with me and I'm here to serve, serve you. And I'll just stay in India till I reach awakening, till enlightenment happens. And whatever I have to do, I have to beg for food and live in a temple, whatever I do. So a part of me had this very, very strong desire of doing that. 
of just diving 100% in what seems to be a spiritual life. So this was like consuming me like fire. The other part was that I enjoyed driving a nice car. I enjoyed fashion. I enjoyed uh, going out to dinner uh, with a beautiful lady, sit at a table, candlelight dinner, and spend $200 on food and wine and everything. And then at the end, you know, throw your credit card there and pay for it and just be, be mindless, careless about it and enjoy luxury and freedom that kind of freedom of being able to travel around the world and do whatever you want to do. Buy anything you want and drive anything you want, eat anything you want, all of it. So there's this battle, I call it the world above and the world below. It's not really above and below, okay? Because both are necessarily, but I call it that. So I go through this struggle and I'm like, why am I like this? And my craziness, all the craziness that I, I had, my addictions, my addiction to the high, getting high, wanting to be high. Not necessarily high because of substances, being high to be around my guru, getting this high that I get from when coming into this energy field. And then at that time, I didn't know it's really coming from myself. I thought it's coming from someone else. But anyway, you have this also craziness inside you. Addiction to danger, addiction to alcohol, drugs, sex. Really seriously being consumed by it. But then, so you have this very powerful duality inside you. Of one part is you're yearning and crying for being holy and being really still and dedicating yourself like a monk to godly life, godly world, purity that you imagine, you think it's pure. And the other part of you is worldly, is loving the pleasures of senses and wants to do anything for more. Is that, does that sound familiar to you? Is this something you can relate to? Or I'm the only weird one here? <laughs> so, struggling into this thing, can you imagine that intensely? And since you're, you are just being pulled, it, and at times I feel like I'm really being torn into pieces. I'm literally feeling torn. Someone is cutting me. Somebody has connected me from my legs and my, my arms into two chariots, and each chariot is going a different direction and they're just pulling me apart. I'm being torn. And it's very intense. I'm going through all this thing with myself. Why am I like this? This question would always come. Why am I like this? Why do I have to be like this? Why can't I just dive into the spiritual world and just be dedicated to that? Or when the other compulsions would come and the other side would appear is why can't I just go in the world of 
the world and dedicate myself into making money and buying more homes and building a business and being financially wealthy so I can just go and play around all the time and buy anything I want and do whatever I want to do. Forget about God. Forget about all these stories. That's just nonsense. It's bullshit. I only live this life and I want to dedicate it to the pleasure of senses. So I'm being torn in, in, in this transaction in between these two worlds. And it was very, very powerful, very painful, and it was a big struggle for years and years. Then awareness started to come. As the mind became more quiet, awareness started to increase. And listening and following my spiritual teacher, as my mind became quiet, then I could, my real eye started to open up and my real ears started to listen. I could start, began to hear what Papaji was teaching. I began to see because the mind started to quiet down and slowly, slowly, I was able to go beyond my story. going beyond the story. You're with me? Are you here? Yeah, good. As I'm going beyond my story into the world of presence and silence, I begin to see that Through the grace of my teacher, because I feel like there was no way in the world I could have come to this awareness if I had not met my teacher and if I had not surrendered to my teacher, I feel I would have never come to this and I would be running around the world banging my head against this wall and that wall and suffering ultimately, being happy when I got what I wanted and suffer when I didn't. So, Papaji always used to say, you are an expression of the Absolute. You are an expression of the Absolute. And he was saying it in different ways, but it wasn't clicking. And as the mind is becoming more quiet through his teachings, because the teaching was all about be quiet, keep quiet, he used to say, keep quiet, be silent. But I wasn't getting it. I mean, a part of it was like I never had It's the, today is a different era. We have, it's easier, you can, sort of access to your teacher. Then it wasn't like this. It was a different story. They were there, but they weren't available in that way. So it was like really almost impossible to have a private time you could have asked for it and you probably would get half an hour but that wasn't enough i wanted to be around the teacher i wanted to be around an enlightened being to see how they're dealing with everyday life and i wanted more i wanted to drink it i wanted their direct instructions so you had to settle for whatever you got 
and then go sit with the rest of your peers and the rest of the sannyasins that they were at the satsang and just talk to them and try to process this and that and not everybody knew what was going on. So it was confusing. But I followed, I decided that I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to work on this. I surrender. And I kind of keep it quiet, keep myself quiet. So you're quiet, you're still... You practice being still, practice being quiet, practice to be uh, Zen. And you go beyond the mind activities. And then I started to see and realize and that I am an expression of the Absolute. This is exactly what God wants me to be. My craziness, my desires for being worldly, and my desires for being godly. This is exactly what existence what the Spirit, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, wants me to be. This is actually God itself appearing as a human being. His name is Zarathustra. And now Her Majesty is expressing itself as Zarathustra with all of his wisdom and his craziness, they're all in one package. So as I began to realize that, simultaneously I also realized that everybody else is also an expression of the same one. Everybody else is an expression of the Absolute. Everybody else is also God. My teacher asked me and gave me a task. My homework was to go and pull the mask of everyone that I met, rip their mask off and look through to see beyond the mask who's there. A tremendous revelation took place. A shocking truth revealed itself. It was, it revolutionized my spiritual career and my spiritual development. As I pulled the mask of everyone that I encountered, I was shocked to see, <gasps> I was like, oh my God, no. Every time I was like, no, oh my God. Behind the mask of everyone that I ripped, whether they were nice or they were angry or they were pretty or attractive or not or seemed violent or vicious or friendly, beyond every mask that I pulled, I saw the same one. It was Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, in disguise as different people.
It was always the same one. There has never been any other one. The same one appeared as a saint. The same one appeared as a vicious, evilish person. It was the same. They're all expressions of the Absolute. All expressions of the same one, the one that appears as many. As I began to understood this, to understand it, I also understood that this is exactly how I'm supposed to be. And I stop questioning myself. Why do I, why am I acting this way or I'm acting that way? I started to accept myself that this is exactly how existence, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, wants me to be. If it wanted me to be different, I would have been different. If it wanted me to be all dedicated to be in India, putting a lungi around me and throw my passport away and go and sit in a temple or go to my teacher and be his servant and do that kind of work, that would exactly what will happen. And if it wants me to go in the world and live a worldly life, then that would happen. But the expression of that, the expression of the Absolute, is, in this case, Zarathustra. A man who has one foot in this world and one foot in that world. And both of them are me. I am both of it, simultaneously. So, as this is happening, I begin to accept myself for the way I am, exactly the way I am, with everything that comes out of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And began to accept and love myself, accepting my dark side as well as my light, recognizing that one cannot exist without the other. The light is meaningless if there is no dark. So I am fine and perfect the way I am with all my craziness and all the love and compassion. All of it is exactly how Her Majesty wants to be. This is Her Majesty's expression. This is an expression of the Spirit. That's how it wants this body to be. That's how it wants this face to be. That's how it wants everything to be. Can it improve? Yes. Can I make changes? Maybe. But it's fine the way it is exactly. And through that love came, self-love came. Started to love and accept myself. And that's what needs to be done. 
the recognition of one truth that we're all expressions of the Absolute. We're all representing the One, the way we are, exactly the way we are, no more, no less, exactly with the body you have, exactly with the life you have. Whatever is your karmic path, what are, whatever are your struggles, everything that is happening is exactly how Her Majesty wants it to be because this is how it's expressing itself. So it gave me this understanding, gave me the chance to go beyond the good and the bad. into this journey of self-love, of understanding, of recognizing that the presence is here, God is here, the living spirit is here in my heart and it's expressing itself in all these different aspects of life because it's the absolute, it's unlimited, it's infinite. It can simultaneously be all of us and experience life from every different angle as a woman, as a man, as a mother, as a child, as a victim, as a victor. as a child that is living a life of being disabled, as a child who lives a life of being a genius. It comes at Mozart, it comes at Albert Einstein, it comes at Adolf Hitler, it comes as Mother Mary, it comes as Jesus Christ, it comes as Saddam Hussein, it comes at Donald Trump, it comes at Tesla, Edison, you and I, a single mom, a single dad, an abandoned child, a genius child. It comes from of all of them because it wants to experience every different angle possible simultaneously. Why does it want to experience? Because it can. Because it wants to see itself. Because it's in love with itself. And it wants, it's a child who wants to experience everything. It wants to know everything. It wants to find everything. So if you understand this, then you begin to accept and love yourself the way you are because you're perfect the way you are, as you are, exactly the way you are is perfect. Can you accept? and love yourself exactly the way you are right now. Not you next week, not you if you lose weight, not you if you learn another language, not you if now you have a child, not you if you make more money, you buy your ideal home, or you find your soulmate, not you if is more educated, you, the way you are, right now, as you are. Can you recognize that Her Majesty 
lives inside you. She surrounds you. She plays around you. She's your pulse, your breath, your existence is that. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the Creator of all creations, is shining in your heart. And what do we do? We run around crying out about our story. Can you recognize that? Can you drop your story and go into a deep silence and recognize that God, that spirit is breathing through you? And in that realizing your self-worth, that if you were not worthy and you weren't loved, you would have never been able to know what love is or touch it or feel it or transmit it. You would be as cold as a rock. So of course you're being loved and of course you're beautiful and you, of course you have God inside you. Otherwise you would have never been here and you could have never heard what I'm saying. As thousands of people listen, try to hear what I say, but they never heard it and few can hear it. Recognize who you are. Recognize your love. Recognize how beautiful you are. The way you're shaped. Because this is God's will. This is how God wants you to be. This is how her Majesty is expressing itself as you. Recognize that. And love follows. See that the power of love is in you. And you have this power that can transform everything that it touches. And in that, you begin to love and accept yourself and appreciate your qualities, which are godly. Because I see that in you. And if I can love you and I don't know you, I promise you, you can love yourself too. If I can have love for you, compassion, and see your beauty, surely you can see yourself. But you have to let go of your story, my brothers and sisters. You gotta let go of that story and look in the mirror and see your own beauty, your light. See the presence of God inside you, shining brightly, waiting for you to discover it. Because you're perfect the way you are. Just be quiet. 
practice being quiet. Learn to be silent. And it comes, it comes naturally. Go beyond your mind, your story will disappear and you discover peace in every moment of your life. Your heart starts to open up as you're being quiet and love, light, presence begin to reveal itself You can't get to it by doing therapy or mental activities. It just keeps you away from it. And right now, at this time, it's the perfect opportunity to take the quantum leap and dive into the fifth dimensional consciousness. It's a perfect time. Existence has set up the perfect scenario. Most of the distractions are taken away. You can't really freely travel. You can't get into different places that offer entertainments. Everything is geared in forcing you to go inwards, to be quiet. Even they put a mask on your mouth. The mask represents be quiet. We're not talking about being obedient. I'm not talking about be quiet to the establishment and be a robot and be obedient and without asking questions, go to war and get killed or kill. That's not the be quiet I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritual silence. Be quiet. Be silent. Use this opportunity. Take advantage of this very precious moment that's been presented to us for this journey inwards, for the exploration of the inner worlds, so you can discover the truth of who you are, so you can have an opportunity in this self-awakening mastery to master yourself, to know who you are, not who you think you are.
anybody has any questions anything you feel like asking or sharing Hi, Britta. Hi, uh, Zarathustra. Thank you so much. It was very deep. Um, a question about the stillness. Um, obviously, stillness is no thought, no mind activity, I presume, and it's, it's my experience. Um, How would I phrase it? Is the aim to be able to retain this, like ongoing, or do we tend to go in and out of it as we, you know, catch ourselves, concentrate, whatever? Or would you say something more about this? Expand a little more on the actual stillness once we experience that, which I do, but I. I don't remain in the, in, in, in that um, dimension, which I guess is fifth dimension, obviously all the time, or I probably wouldn't be sitting here <laughs> oh, learning. <laughs> so could you could you say something else about that, please, about how it progresses or what right. one can do about it, how one can help oneself more, etc. Sure, I'll be delighted. First of all, It's not true that you don't remain in this place. Let's make this part clear. A part of you is always in this place. If it wasn't in this place, of the fifth dimensional consciousness, then there would have been no witness. Nobody would be witnessing of you going into this place and you coming out of this place. Someone, something awakened, something still at all times, must be witnessing you diving in it and you di getting out of it. That is always here. That is always still. The goal is what you're referring to, that you go in and out of it, is a temporary state that you get a glimpse, temporarily you dive into silence, and then you come out of the silence, But the real you, the observer, who's observing this transaction and is able to repeat it as you have just reported it, is always in silence and it's always still. And my goal in what I do 
is to make you recognize that part which is not a feeling and it's not a state it's a space it's a permanent space which is always here states can change states come and go I could be in a state of meditation I can be in a state of panic I can come home from work and put my feet up and pour myself a glass of wine and have a little wine and just be in a unwind and go into a relaxing state next thing is I can get some news oh they're towing your car and then I panic and I run on the street and then I go into nervousness or anxiety so that's another state but the wa watcher, the observer, is the one, is the space, which is always here. And it never changes, and it's always still. And my goal is to help you recognize that. I unmuted you again. Uh, yes, uh, that's very helpful, actually. Um, the, the difference of the space and the state. Correct. Uh, that, that actually clarifies it for me, and I do experience both, of course. Um, so our, our, do I understand you to say that we are always in that space? the observer, the witness, the whatever, the height, the consciousness, the awareness, but that this, what was that, that was space, right. uh, but that the states come yeah. and go according to our distractions or the latest news of the elections or we're feeling sick or whatever it might be, we're helping someone. But the way of life comes there, there's states that interweave, but that the space is the background remaining, always remaining, as the, the God part, the observer, the yes. whatever. Yes, the truth of who you are. Otherwise, how would you know that you went into a meditative place and then you went to chaos? Yes. Who is aware of the two? Yes. Beautiful. So the so, so, bring your attention, shift your attention right now, simply on the one who is aware of the two, but is not any of it. You can do it, you can do it right now. Just do it in a moment. Just bring, bring your attention. Simply bring your attention, turn your attention inwards, not to how you feel, but the one who's aware of it, and see what happens. It's a, it's a stillness, a still awareness. Yes, almost immediately everything becomes quiet mm -hmm. yes, yes. almost Im immediately the quality of the air the space you're in shifts so the everyday life i mean the practice of that clearly it's it's that's easy in, in prayer meditation and quietness etc 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 um, for all of us, or for me particularly, the, the discipline or the practice 
is to be able to remain there in, in, in that space while we're talking to friends or while we're listening to this or that. Not to, not to drop that one off and get involved with the action out there. In the beginning, in early stages, yes. Your homework is to be completely indifferent to whatever is happening. Completely indifferent. Like, you absolutely do not care of the most significant event in the world happen, and you're just like, okay? Yeah. They, well, you, you want freedom, right? Right, right, right. right. You, you want to become free or you want to stay a slave? Which one do you want? Yeah, you're tired of slavery, aren't you? Yes. You've had enough, your fair share of ups and downs and fear, anxiety. You've lost, you lost loved ones. You've been heartbroken. You have suffered. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to take the challenge? Or you want to fall back into an old pattern that only brings suffering and no comfort and hoping maybe your president or your leader or whomever creates a better world for you. Or are you just going to take responsibility and create it for yourself? No, I would take the challenge. Yes. Then the challenge is to do your homework. And I'm here to help you. I'm here. Thank you. That even if hundreds of times you fail and you deviate from your path, you come back to me. And I'll just put you back on your path. That's what I'm here to do. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for all of us and for your teaching. My pleasure. Shanti Devi. Yes, hi Sarah Chostra. Hello. Hello. Where where are you located? In Germany. Okay, where where in Germany? Uh, near Darmstadt, it's between Heidelberg and Frankfurt. Near where you said? Frankfurt and Heidelberg. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. My challenge is that I quite often I'm suffering from severe physical pain. Okay. And when my body is aching very much, it is difficult not to forget who I really am. Do you have an idea what I could do? It's like sometimes the pain is so so heavy that I feel reduced to the pain and I can't think anything other. And then it's difficult to be the observer or to find stillness. What, can you tell me a little bit about this pain? Are you comfortable to talk about it here? Or that's something you like to not mention? Yeah, I can talk about it. Um, it's uh, a severe fibromyalgia. Okay. So my joints and my muscles are aching very much. Okay. Well, there is a history of, of violence that produced it, yeah? that something in myself really um, contracted too much. Are you feeling the pain right now? Yeah, a little bit. How is your digestion? How do you digest food? Quite well. Great.
And this pain comes and goes, or it's there all the time? It's there very often, and I have times when it feels like um, the old wound is activated, and then my body cramps. So you're relating it to a an old emotional wound? Yes. So, right now, can you just relax into the pain, even though if it's uncomfortable, for five seconds, just relax into admitting the pain without resisting it, and just kind of dive into it? Then I feel that the pain gets a little bit reduced, but it's still there. It's like. Uh, so, right now that you kind of dove into it and you relaxed into it, it relaxed? It changed? Yeah, it changed from six to four. Okay. Okay. Okay, what I would like you to do is just simply in this moment, kind of see yourself that you are embracing the pain, welcome it. And see if you cannot resist it. And simply be aware it's here, but it's not being resisted. You don't have to do anything else. Use any kind of techniques or methods or visualizations. I don't want you to do anything to try to get rid of it. I simply want you to embrace it, that it's here. That brings me to tears. I beg your pardon? But my, my tears are running. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Just I find it a little bit difficult. I understand because this is something new we're doing. You haven't done this before, so all of your life or time that you've been encountering this pain, you have resisted it, and you try to get rid of it naturally, and now. I'm asking you not try to get rid of it, kind of hug it, kind of sort of welcome it, embrace it, let it just be and just let's hang out here in this space and I'm going to come back to you, just hang out in this space with it, just Simply, if you can, drop your resistance to the pain and just stay with it. Okay. Let it, let it be. And let's see what happens. I'm going to come back to you in a few minutes and we talk about it again, okay?
And if I don't see you, you can write on the chat box if you want to connect. If you have a question or you have a comment about what we talked about. Or something's come up for you, a revelation, you feel something, you feel like sharing it. Hello, Lee. Good evening. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank God. <laughs> I woke up this. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question, okay? And this is something that this is something that I have struggled with a lot in my life. Yeah. Okay. I have. I can't resist breaking something down and having a fight. So if somebody comes into my space and there's negativity and I'm poked and I'm triggered, I find it very difficult to not go there. You mean not to fight and not to resist or to resist and fight? There's this part of me that wants to break it down and prove, that, prove it right. That I'm right. Right. And there's part of me that knows that I'm right and I want to be right and that it's like I have to break that down. And it's like I am, no, I, in reflection, then I go, I know that this is a mirror, right? And I can look and I can see and I can know that this is a mirror and it's reflecting it back to me. And I can have moments of awareness and I'm very aware of the ego. But this part of me wants to fight. It wants to break it down. Yes. If you come in like an energy, a jab, it'll poke me, it'll jab me, and my intuition is going, no, and I just want to break it down. And it's caused me a lot of problems. And it's usually around women. I have, like... I usually find some women exceptionally difficult to be around. And I think it's to do with a mother wound because I have a difficult relationship with my mother, which is very sad because we've had no relationship all our life. There's nothing except fighting there. Well, you may, to your surprise, uh, find out that a big portion of the population of men on the planet, they share your view. They find women difficult. Yeah, I find that a lot of women can... Um, so so you're, not, you're not the only one, my dear. Okay. <laughs> You, you should ally f with men because they're your allies. <laughs> they, they will invite you to go to a pub and have a beer and trash talk women. <laughs> Almost any married man will join your club and your army. <laughs> Because by nature they are, and that's their nature. That's how they're designed to be. They're difficult. That's why being married and having children with a woman makes a perfect opportunity for a conscious man to become awakened. Because his woman becomes 
his master, the guru. And she always has the Zen stick. The moment that he strays away from the path, she's there to beat him up with, with the Zen stick for him to drop his ego. That's why God created women, to put men back on their straight path. So, away from that, who is aware, who's observing this behavior? This behavior you have, this pattern that you have, that you don't find suitable and it's not serving you, obviously, it causes some disturbances and maybe some, yeah, some, maybe, I beg it's like that moldy salmon. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, so this, a pattern that keeps repeating, and you've come to this point in your life now that you recognize it and you see it. Maybe you've been recognizing it for a while. Maybe you've done some workshops or therapy or you've seeked some help from professionals. But obviously it's not gone and it's there. It's very there, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right. Like, uh, right. It's just slightly hip that, like, you could just touch that wound just a small bit and it'll, it'll activate it. Yeah. You know? Yes, exactly. But my question is, who is seeing it? Who is aware of this? Yeah, the supreme awareness is aware of this. So you are aware of it. Yeah. Yes. So you are aware of a behavior of a pattern that every once in a while happens and takes over your life. In the moment, it takes over. And if you do, you come across a strong-headed woman that you feel like they're not right, they may say something to trigger you, and all hell breaks loose, and you go at it. Yeah. But there is still, Lee, there is something in you that remains untouched. Something in you is aware of this pattern. That awareness doesn't change. That awareness remains the awareness. When this thing happened and you go through the motions and later you reflect back, are you more aware of what happened or less aware of what happened? I'm aware, but there's a real boldness in me. Yeah, so you're aware of your boldness. But what does the boldness do to your ability to be aware? Is it ever makes you to be less aware or more aware? Can you be less of I am? I am here, or be more of an I am here? Does it increases your presence of being or decreases your presence of being? It does, aff it does affect your emotions and activates your mind to judge it, but are you more of a presence of a human being or less of a human being? I, I'm definitely more because the awareness is always telling me through my body that, and through my conscience and through my heart that it's no way benefiting me. I understand that. But there is something there that it comes to that conclusion. Something is making that decision and that judgment that this is not benefiting you. 
correct? Yeah. Right. Yet it still happens. And there is nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. So a behavior takes place that you don't like it, you don't find it conscious, and pulls you and drags you into involvement with another woman, especially women, they pull the trigger on you. But there is still something here, because this is very important, you're in a very good place, my dear. Really, really good place. And right now, what I'm sharing with you is a golden opportunity for you to discover something really golden. So just be here with me. And I know you're clever enough that you can recognize it. Let's put the judgment of how we're investing values into the action and the behavior away. Let's just take that part away. Let's be indifferent to whether this is a conscious behavior or pattern or it's unconscious, whether it's serving you or not serving you. Let's take that, that out of the equation, okay, for a moment. You can come back and go back to that again if you like, but for now, can we play that game? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's take this place. Let's sit here, take your seat. That there is no judgment. No one gives this any kind of value. Whether you do have this reaction or you don't. And simply observe it from this place without any kind of judgment. As you're observing other things in life, other phenomena, other activities, other things that happen, but you don't have any kind of opinion about it. Now, from this perspective, does it matter what Lee does? Beautiful. Stay in this place. Try that for one week. You can always go back if you want to, but try it from that place. Be indifferent to how you're going to react to a strong-headed woman who is not right, she's wrong, yet she's pissing you off. And be indifferent in how you react to her. Maybe you're... Be indifferent in your judgment. And let's see what kind of power that is going to have over you. And if you fail, it's okay. We'll try again. Because existence will keep giving you another opportunity. Okay, how does that sound to you? Can we do that? We can give it a try, certainly. We have nothing to lose. The worst case scenario, you will be where you're at now. All 
Okay, my dear? Thank you. Yeah, we'll check back. We'll check in with each other in the next couple of days. I'm, I'm glad you're here. You're here with us. All right. Okay, Miss Shanti Devi. <laughs> Tell me about your your observation. I found it uh, as if my heart was embracing the pain, and it diminished, and it's now between one and zero point five on the scale of one to ten. So the pain, the pain pretty much is gone. Yes. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad you have the courage to come out and share with, with us. So I appreciate that. We're coming to the end of our event for today. So I want to thank you for your presence. This was the end of the day four, right? It was day four, right? I'm losing the days. So we have day five tomorrow. We have, f we have five more days together. So how exciting. I get to be with you for five more days. I'm so lucky. I just want you to know you're not the only one who's excited. I am very excited too. <laughs> so the feeling is absolutely mutual. The love is mutual. Equally as strong. And it's being recognized. And thank you for your comments. I appreciate your messages. I appreciate your interacting and thank you for all the love that you're sending us. It's very well received. We feel it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Amir wants me <laughs> to remind everybody that uh, this broadcast will be, it's immediately posted on Facebook because we are doing a, a live Facebook, uh, uh, we're doing Facebook Live. And uh, after we, we, we will go through this video and, and uh, clean it up and then email it to you and it goes on my website and also goes on YouTube channel. My channels are Zarathustra 5D, all my channels from... Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all of them are Zarathustra 5D. My website is Zarathustra.tv. So if you just learn how to spell my name, then you can add TV to it and it makes it easy. Um, and also my email is info at Zarathustra.tv. So if you would like to contact us, you're welcome to do that and write to us. Um, we have a, uh, this event is going to go all the way till October 18th, which is this coming Sunday. And every day we're doing it from 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. Los Angeles time. We, I'm also offering a workshop that's going to be in November and that's self-awakening mastery workshop and the workshop is designed to help you to activate the grid and raise your vibrations to a higher frequency and when you do come into a high vibrational frequency field to your surprise you may discover that a lot of your issues begin to disappear. 
what was the problem in third dimension in this in this frequency does not exist when you elevate to a higher frequency especially when you dive into the fifth dimensional vibrational frequency and the self awakening mastery workshop is to help you aid you and teach you how you can use active meditations and specific techniques to change your frequency so we'll be doing that and i'll be helping you with it in addition to that i have designed a private coaching program it's called life training program that so far since its creation and i started it in march of 2020 so far we had a 100% positive uh, and successful results everyone who attended has who completed the program has succeeded and reached their spiritual goals and many different things have happened which i'm very proud of it I, it's gone beyond my own expectations and it is a private teaching program it's designed to serve your specific needs whatever they are so i will design a program to help you and we'll meet once a week the meeting is about one to one and a half hour and it's supposed to be three months but it's never three months because we have all these other events in between so it stretches longer but it's potent it's powerful and it works so if you feel like committing to it and you feel like you're ready to go for it and you can do it then contact me and i'll set up a private consultation with you and we'll go through your needs this would be a tailor-made program specifically for you and i probably this is the only time i can offer it in this year 2020 till probably end of 2021 until hopefully the gates to traveling open up and then i'll go back to my traveling around the world and teaching so don't take this for granted just like a lot of people took the fifth dimensional quantum healing training program for granted and they thought it's going to be done all the time but it had a window and it's not happening now now we have limited it to it once a year in sweden and obviously that is not even happening so there's no guarantee in any of these things there's a moment an opportunity happens and that's the time to jump through it and go for it so just wanted to share this with you that's what's available and i'm here and i'm with you we do have our academy regularly the 5d academy of higher consciousness that's an event that i'm committed to do pretty much every wednesday it's a free event and you're always welcome to join me there i send you my love love and light blessings to all of you and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow namaste